Welcome back, and here we are still talking about Toyota Land Cruiser 300. Well, my friends, it's a massive car, so it's a massive three-part video mini-series, really, that this ended up being. I will very quickly explain to you. So, first of all, if you have missed on the two previous parts, they are on my channel, obviously, preceding this video. Take a look at them for all the con context. Now, why did I stretch this review, um, and why did I stretch this translation and adaptation of the video? To give it justice. To give it justice. Uh, the disassembly video by Ilya and Klubny Service Moscow, all credit is always where it's due. Большое спасибо, ребята. Еще раз, ссылки на ваш канал всегда внизу. I'm just thanking the original creators and preserving all the credits. In this video, I would say he's more focusing, Ilya and his team, they're focusing on the engine. So the focus is going to be the engine quite intimately. And yeah, I will do my very best being a non-mechanic myself to be as close to the original content as I can be and that is where I bring value to you my friends and hopefully and arguably it's not something that we will get from anywhere else. So if you enjoyed this nice little run with me, this mini series of disassembly of Toyota Land Cruiser 300, let's give Klubny Service the credit that they deserve and please give me a like because it's also a lot of work that goes into this translation and adaptation of the videos and it tells me that I'm doing something right. Thank you very much for your support. Subscribe for more because more videos about Toyotas and other cars are coming. Are coming to you at the very least at the rate of one video per week. Let's keep watching. We are starting this final part three of Land Cruiser 300 disassembly talking about the engine. Needless to say, this is going to be probably the most technical and detailed part of this disassembly. So make yourselves comfortable and get your notepads out if you are so mechanically inclined. According to Ilya, engine is probably the most interesting mechanical part of any vehicle that anyone would be planning to buy. What are we seeing here? It is roughly a 3.5 liter 6-cylinder turbo petrol engine that uh, with some modifications Toyota apparently borrowed from Lexus LS sedan car model. It is unfortunately not a cast iron main cylinder block as many petrol engines are these days, but Ilya points out that the piston shafts are made of cast iron with pretty well designed cooling system. So all of that is a relief. A lot of elements of the engine have changed, such as the shape of the pistons, the coils adapted for heavier off-roading. Even though the pressure here is stated at 10.4, which is apparently not much, this engine features a combined fuel injection system that Toyota has tested out on modern models such as Camry and RAV4 to ensure a consistent performance and torque on um, changing during changing drive conditions. This is a 24-valve engine block that is supporting VVTi flammable gas distribution system, which is yet again rather classic and apparently common for modern Toyota vehicles. Now, what is different? It's a twin turbo approach. Here we're seeing design of the vehicle and the engine where we can see that the exhausts are connected to the top part, to the head of the whole unit, which apparently supports higher cooling values. Straight behind the turbine we can see these catalyzers and I won't pretend here translating this video that I personally understand what they're for, but Ilya points out for viewers like me that yet again it's a standard and proven system that an experienced mechanic should be happy to see because it's predictable and unlikely to fail you. If an engine features two turbines, you can bet that it will also have an intercooler system and we are seeing here part of it. In the first video, after we've seen the front bumper removed from the vehicle, we've also seen, if you remember, two extra radiators, kind of on the sides there, that were covering the intercooler system, as Toyota took liquid-based cooling system very, very seriously in this case, as it should. Let's pause on technical details for a second and talk about the range and models of these vehicles for a bit. There are a few of those in Land Cruiser 300 lineup, apparently at least available in Russia. Let's remind ourselves that Ilya here is looking at a petrol-based 70-year Toyota anniversary or Jubilee edition of this vehicle. Uh, he is about to show us how Toyota here succeeded at marketing. Yes, marketing. As we look at the vehicle frame uh, lifted up, 
What is this about then? Well, when someone tells you that something is anniversary edition, specifically in relation to Toyota Land Cruiser, you would expect it to be top model in terms of luxury and inclusion of all possible features, including mechanicals. This apparently is the first Land Cruiser where that is not the case. There is apparently another version of Land Cruiser which is labeled Comfort Plus, Comfort Plus package that is truly off-road enabled and it apparently contains design and construction elements that this anniversary edition doesn't have while being cheaper. Here we're looking at a rear axle gearbox that takes LSD marked oil and um, we have to trust Ilya here that apparently this particular version of the construction of the axle and the gearbox is actually not built to allow for you to block the rear uh, differential while driving, while off-roading and instead it is actually built for speed. I know it sounds kind of stupid when we talk about a Land Cruiser 300 but it's what he said here. And it apparently, in that Comfort Plus version, which is cheaper once again, you could actually block the rear differential and engage in some robust 4x4 maneuvering. A lot of reviewers who actually know what they're talking about, according to Ilya here, he, uh, he, they pointed out in their reviews that Land Cruiser 300 often feels rather unstable in sharp turns. There is uh, an unpleasant body roll feeling and all of that, but those people did not explain why, because obviously they don't know. Here we can see that the stabilizing bar is missing cylinders of the stabilizing system that he makes a reference to, uh, that apparently is present on the other properly uh, off-roading enabled versions of this vehicle, or properly equipped versions of this vehicle, not just specific to off-roading. But they are not here on this top-of-the-range anniversary edition for some unknown reason. Absence of this system is exactly what Ilya is attributing to this unstable uh, behavior of the vehicle on the road. If your TLK 300 feels the same way, who knows? Chances are that your model might be also stripped down to that bare bar too. One more thing pointed to us here is that Toyota decided to give electric handbrake mechanism these metal caps in Land Cruiser 300, clearly showing some intent for this vehicle to leave the solid road surface and hit some dirt and mud by design. With these elements being there, but stabilizing system missing, is, uh, it is perplexing uh, for an experienced mechanic over here. Uh, we are seeing here, we're being shown a spring-based suspension system, no hydraulics, no pneumatic suspension bars that could be regulated and adjusted further, and Ilya jokes here saying, in case you're wondering, where is my hydraulic suspension gone? It's in Lexus these days, my friends, because it's more expensive, and this is rather obviously bare bones. Hard to explain why, but it is. We are looking at the rear axle bar here and our host points out yet again that uh, it's a very classic solution that at its core has not changed since 1950s when it was first introduced. But if, before you jump at me and Ilya here with your vast mechanical knowledge, I'm joking, I always welcome further insights. Of course, Toyota has changed and modernized a few things, such as the angle of how the rear wheel suspension bars are installed and some of these extra bars hinges. Ilya is following along the exhaust system underneath here, all the way under the vehicle. So we can see the transmission block, um, uh, you know, uh, that we have seen from the top in the previous part of this disassembly video. And we see reminders that the car is obviously still generally designed for off-roading as far as its frames, frame and underbelly protection is concerned. As he is hitting it here, the few panels with a metal bar that he has in his hand, and uh, I could hear solid steel banging in the original video, which tells us that it's all built rather solidly with the intent of being hit and scraped as the car goes off-road. Front axle and transmission here does not have a forced differential enabling method, which Ilya thinks is not such a good thing and a real shame, because yet again all the other versions of Land Cruiser were allowing you to block the frontal differential too, so not seeing it here is really puzzling. 
Uh, here we're looking at another Toyota Innovation, the hinge and the turning contraption for the frontal wheels, which is apparently not made of cast iron or steel and is also using some kind of light alloy, which could cause a worry if you just read about it or heard about it somewhere without looking at it the way it's shown to us right now. Uh, and apparently things are not so bad as Ilya is about to explain them to us. Front suspension here is a classic A-shaped levers used by Toyota. Uh, Ilya is pointing out that when you are off-roading, the main physical force of the heat and the main kind of just pressure that the vehicle is dealing with would be coming either from the bottom, vertically, upward, or from the front, horizontally. And this massive A-shaped lever looks somewhat similar to the one used in 200 series that is bolted onto cast iron elements as well. So the only real exposure, exposure this light alloy enabled fitting of the wheel could receive is if something very very strongly hits your wheel from the side. Which is, I'm sure you would agree, a rather unlikely scenario in case of emergency or during off-roading. So Toyota definitely calculated its chances here appropriately and used metals here rather smartly. This frontal bar also has changed as it carries the steering mechanisms of Land Cruiser 300. Ilya points out that this vehicle has hydraulic enabled steering bar. There is also a hydraulic pump. And experienced mechanics here would ask themselves how a heavy vehicle like this would hold its lane if you let go of a steering wheel, for example, if it relies on a hydraulic pump and the bar underneath. Well, that apparently is solved by electrically powered steering modules installed inside the and straight on the steering column, where that system is helping this older hydraulic, more solid construction to work as intended. Ilya also, also offered us here a rather deep dive, very deep dive, into how the new modernized disc-based brakes are assembled on TLK300 and how they are apparently better than those of the older models such as TLK200. And while even Ilya's older Toyota Sequoia and other Land Cruisers that he drove a lot across Russia never apparently had any issues with the brakes, he has reasons to believe that this modernized system, the details of which I'm skipping here deliberately to preserve my own sanity, is going to work even better. So finally, wrapping up after three parts of this disassembly video, it was very long, yes, but I hope you have enjoyed it and learned a lot about the new Land Cruiser 300. I certainly personally did. Uh, let's all thank Ilya and his team at Klubny Service for all the hard work that they did here. Leave a little like to this video so that lazy YouTube algorithm shows it to more people. And let's catch up next time. Same place, same time to talk about something else cars related. Thank you for watching and goodbye for now.